Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the top 100 Pokemon here from PV Poke for the Ultra League. It's not actually 100 Pokemon, as always I just cut out the Shadow Pokemon so we don't have anything overlapping. So we have around 80 Pokemon here in total that we're going to, um, yeah judge today but some of them have shell forms and some of them kind of need their shell forms as well still so like we're still going to talk about them but let's move on here and start already into the video but before that of course feel free to subscribe to the channel only around 40 percent of you are actually subscribed so would appreciate if you would hit the subscribe button it's free and it's down below so first pokemon we're going to have here the venusaur venusaur is kind of awkward to play right now. I feel like it has some potential right now, so I would put it into the B tier, but um, you don't really see it too often, so I wouldn't really put it higher. We have the Charizard, very strong flying type Pokemon, has to be S tier for sure, especially in the current meta, which is based around fighting plus um, those uh, steel type Pokemon. It is fairly strong as well, as we're going to have now the last one of the, of course, uh, starter evolutions of the first generation Blastoise, it's going to be somewhere around the Venusaur tier right now. I think it's also a very solid Pokemon to use right now, but not a lot of people are already playing it. Pidgeot, definitely a strong pick. I wouldn't put it into S tier right now, but it's definitely somewhere up there. So we have it in the A tier. We're going to have the Alone Sand Slash having access also to a Shadow Form like the Charizard. Definitely an S tier for sure. While a little bit lower, definitely a strong Pokemon to pick for the Open Auto League. We have Nidoqueen next, and I actually would put Nidoqueen a little bit higher than you might expect. I think this Pokemon has a ton of potential right now because you're going to be able to completely hardwall something like a Reggie Steel, something like a Verizian, something like a Cobalion. Most of the top tier meta is actually kind of weak to Nidoqueen right now and especially the Shadow variant seems to have a lot of play right now so I definitely would expect that we will see some more of them as they are also very decent against fairy type Pokemon like the Clefable has to be top of A tier. I wouldn't put an S tier yet, but it's definitely somewhere closer to the S tier compared to like the B tier. Very strong Pokemon, very fast, very bulky, very good fairy type Pokemon. Same kind of goes to alone nine tails, but you don't really see it too often anymore. So I would actually put it into the B tier here as we're gonna move on to one of the Pokemon that definitely poke games if you know them from Twitch would disagree with. Um, we're going to have the Prime Ape here. It's somewhere around like B or C tier. I would not put it very higher. It's very cool though. It's going to have another evolution as well. I made a video about the um, upcoming evolutions as well as regional forms that you can already get the candies for basically as well. So definitely check that video out on my channel. It was, I don't know, like three weeks ago or something. I made a video about this. Check that out. But um, the evolution of this one is going to be very nice. The Primeape itself is decent, but not as strong. We're going to have Poddyrath next, and Poddyrath has to be into the A tier. It's, I think, really high rated on P-Poke as well, breaking the Steel-type Pokemon fairly easily, but I would not put it S tier for sure. It's not really worth it there. We can put the Machamp to the Primeape as well, which I think at least is going to be where it kind of belongs, as you're going to have also another fighting there. I would actually put a little bit below the Prime Imp though, so yeah, Prime Imp definitely going to have a little bit of an advantage. We're going to have Tentacruel next, which is underrated, and I have to put it into an A tier. I always hate to come up against it, because I feel like I never really have a decent answer for it, and for good reason. This Pokemon can basically beat most of the fighting type Pokemon. Having access to Scald is really nice, giving um, Poison Drop damage is really nice against the Fairy type Pokemon. Very strong pick right now. Also so with Blizzard having access to something that can beat something like the Giratina, very cool Pokemon. Gengar, sadly, I have to put it into D tier. It's really not good. I tried to use it recently, like not this season, but last season for a little bit. You never seen a video for it because it was just so bad to use. Sadly, just does not have the former glory that it had back in the day. It was actually really usable as broke. Basically, the Cresselia fairly easily, but in the current meta, it just not really has a spot for it. Something that has to be A tier as well is going to be the Galarian Reasing. Somewhere up there as well. A very, very strong pick. Used it recently in a video as well. It was very, very solid that can recommend you for sure. As we're going to have Lapras next, which I have to put a little bit lower, kind of like one of the victims of having the XL system available. It, you kind of actually can XL it for a little bit, I think like three level ups or whatever, but since like the XL system is around, you don't really see it too often. I don't know why, but like it's not as great anymore, sadly, but very interesting Pokemon still. Not completely horrible to use, but definitely not that great. I think a Pokemon that's kind of underrated is going to be the Articuno. I might actually take a look at the Shadow Articuno um, somewhere around, not like this period of Ultra League, but maybe somewhere later, because I have a really decent one from when they were in the Shadow Raids. So definitely a cool pick. Kind of still be a little bit below, but definitely has some potential. Dragonite 
it's close to S tier as well to me, to me, but I would actually put it a little bit lower just because there are a lot of steel types in the current meta and there's a lot of fairy types, so I would put it a little bit lower. But somewhere around like where Pidgeot is, I feel like that's kind of safe for it, especially the Shadow variant, very difficult to deal with. As you're going to have Meganium next, which I have to put into the B tier, would have put it a little bit higher before, but Earthquake got nerfed and Earthquake actually kind of affects this Pokemon quite a bit, so... Not as great. Lantern next got actually a buff actually for the Ultra League as well. I looked at like some stats or whatever. It got a little bit better in the Ultra League. Um, gained around like 20 ratings since Spark got reworked where people say it's a nerf. It's not really a nerf. Not for Lantern at least. For other Pokemon it definitely is but not for Lantern. So I still want to put into the C tier. Interesting Pokemon for sure. Not sure if the current meta is actually really something where you want to play it in. A lot of Verizons, a lot of Steelix or not as great. As we're going to have Politoed next. Cool Pokemon. Top of B tier somewhere, very strong pick if you have like one, definitely usable, but not as great as for example Steelix. I wouldn't put Steelix above Charizard, but I would put Steelix very high. Thing is with Steelix, if you have two shields in a neutral scenario, you're always going to win, which is insanely overpowered. So this Pokemon is great as a lead, as great as a safe swap, is great in the back. Very, very strong pick, very bulky. Breaking swipe was so unnecessary on this Pokemon. It was already decent before, and now it's just very, very like it's just annoying to deal with because you kind of forced to use certain Pokemon, otherwise you're gonna get completely destroyed by them, which I just don't really like. Like this is one of the reasons I think why the current Ultra League meta doesn't seem that nice for a lot of people. I saw a lot of comments about it as well and I feel like a similar way because you're kind of getting forced to have at least two counters for Steelix in the team, otherwise you're gonna get screwed. So don't really like this Pokemon at all, but sadly it's definitely an ST Pokemon. Next one coming up, Heracross. Um, if the other fighters are in C tier, I would have to put Heracross also somewhere here. It's just all those fighting type Pokemon that are not as good as other fighting type Pokemon, which you're going to have later on anyway, so we're going to see those as well. But um, yeah, definitely not as great as other fighters sadly in the meta right now, so not as cool. One thing that definitely is cool, which I actually would put into the A tier, is Hitmontop. I really enjoyed this Pokemon. It's just a little bit bulkier than something like a Primeape or um, the Machamp, as well as Triple Axel gives it really good coverage in the current meta. I would put a little bit of a low A tier Pokemon, but definitely a cool Pokemon to use. As we next going to have here the, um, yeah, Miltang. I actually don't think it's good in the current meta. I have to actually put it into C tier. Um, it would have been mostly like B or A tier last season, but right now, again, steel type or like fighting type meta, you don't really want to have a normal type like this one available here right now. It's, it doesn't really do anything against steel types or the fighting type Pokemon, so yeah, that's not really the greatest. Swampert is still S tier. I have to put it. It's low S tier. I feel like it lost a little bit of potential also with the Earthquake nerf, but it's still very, very strong. Like, I cannot put it lower than S tier. Swampert is still very strong, but I feel like it's balanced, which is kind of nice. Next up, going to be the Pelipper. Pelipper, the fully XL variant that you can use here. Um, definitely do very, very solid in the current meta. I would actually put it into B tier first, but now I kind of think that it's more suited into A tier actually, just because again, steel and um, fighting type meta, and like a lot of steel types, for example, the um, Steelix itself is going to be weak against the weather ball. So I think Pelipper has a lot of potential in the current meta. And we're going to have another B tier Pokemon here with a war ring coming up. This Pokemon is very strong, very decent right now as well, still, but kind of underused. I kind of have to put a little bit lower as well. So war ring still kind of usable, but not as great. Regirock, I kind of have to do B tier as well for this Pokemon. It could be A or B tier. I don't really see it too often. It is not bad. It's definitely not bad. It's just somewhere like around here. I would put it into a high up B tier. It's really high ranked. I think rank 7 on PE Poke. But I would not put it that high up. Reg Eyes, I have to put you very low as well. I'm sorry, Reg Eyes. I have to put you like somewhere into low C tier. Just not as good as the other ones. As well as Ice Typing is just very bad in general. And um, yeah, Reg Rock at least completely destroys, for example, the Cherry Zard, which is nice as well. Reg Eyes is just standing there and not really having the best time there. Of course, top tier Pokemon, Reggie Steel has to be on rank 1 there for sure. Something that I feel actually lost a lot of potential as Deoxys defense this season. I actually don't know really why, but it doesn't feel as great anymore. And I would actually put it into B tier. You could argue of like, A, I would not put it into S tier anymore. It's somewhere around B and A tier for me, but it's not actually that great anymore. Honestly, at least when I played in the one I saw, it's not as cool because also a lot of Jellicens are around, which is a very strong pick right now, and a lot of um, ghost types in general are around. So while it seems very decent in the meta, I did not really like it recently, at least while I played it. So going to be somewhere there. Skunk Tang, I also kind of would put into the B tier. While the Drapion, I would put a little bit higher. Drapion is a little bit spammier than this one. Both of them are solid though. Um, 
But yeah, they're, they're kind of kind of similar. So like I kind of put them very close to each other, but both are very solid. One of the Pokemon that I would need to put S tier actually is going to be Toxic Rogue. I actually going to do it and put them S tier because Toxic Rogue is super low ranked, but in the current meta, it's a complete core breaker and I have to put S tier right now because it's decent against fairy type Pokemon. You're going to be able to beat steel type Pokemon and the most common fighting type Pokemon are completely um, having their moves resisted by Toxic Rogue. So Toxic Rogue is right now, such a sleeper pick that I would really recommend you to try out. I love always the Pokemon where I play with it. Very strong pick. Definitely has to be S tier for me, even though it's ranked like rank like 60 or something on PE Pog, which is something that you just don't really see, right? Like that's why you do some something like this here, like those tier lists, where we can kind of try to um, show more of how the actual meta looks like. And I feel like that's a little bit more of a yeah, accurate standing there. So you're going to see now the next Pokemon, I have to say, I haven't seen an Obama Snow in quite some time, so I have to kind of pull it also somewhere around where the um, Rage Ice is. Ice typing in general is just not really that great, so that's most likely why. Licky Licky, it's also a C-tier Pokemon. I just don't really see it right now. I also don't really see it in the current meta. I feel like it just doesn't do enough. But maybe it's a little bit better than I think. I don't know. I'm just gonna put a little bit above uh, the, uh, the Miltang here for sure. As yeah, so we're gonna move on to the next one, Gliscor. I feel like there are a lot more answers to this Pokemon nowadays. It just at least feels like it. And also, Earthquake got nerfed. Aerial Ace doesn't really help it too much in this meta right now. So I would put it somewhere into a higher upbeat here, which is definitely still usable, but not as great. No doubt about this next one going to be an S tier, Giratina, it is, honestly, it's just kind of even higher than this. It's just a very strong pick right now, like, you cannot really argue against this Pokemon. Giratina Origin is also very decent, but just not as great as the other one, so we're gonna put a little bit lower into the B tier here, I feel like that's kind of accurate. As we're gonna move on to the Cressalia, of course, also a clear S tier Pokemon to build for the Ultra League, and we see now another one that actually got buffed, but I kind of have to put them kind of where the other ones as well. I think it's a little bit better than, for example, the Venusaur. The thing with Superior now is as Aerial Ace takes a little bit less energy, you're going to get there after 5 Fouse, which is really important for this Pokemon. It's really nice for it. But um, it also gives you coverage against the Verizon, which is really nice for you. But I wish I had like somewhat kind of coverage as well for the, um, yeah, I don't know, for like something like a Giratina, for something like a Steel type Pokemon. I don't know. I think it's way, way better in the Great League compared to the Ultra League. Great League, I really want to take a look at this Pokemon as well. Definitely going to make a team around it as well eventually on this channel. So definitely stay tuned for this. But right now, not as great. Same goes for Samurott. I would not put Samurott above any of the other ones. I don't know. Like, of course, people are going to argue with, like, Blastoise or whatever. I still would put into Seed here. Um, Blastoise is just really bulky in the Ultra League as well as having X2 Ice Beam. Kind of puts it a little bit above um, Samurott for me. Yes, you're going to have a faster um, fast move for Samurott, which is going to be nice. And you have Mega Horn, which is also not that bad. But Ice Beam coverage right now, I feel like it's very decent. You can kind of argue with it, though. Like, I kind of have to put it a little bit higher. I kind of put it a little bit above the... Um, yeah, Blasters just because of it a little bit being spammier there with the Fear Cut as a fast move, but you don't have as much fast move pressure then again. It's kind of awkward, like both are kind of similar, not gonna lie. Scrafty, I think it's kind of risky to play it right now. I would put it still into the 8 here because it has a lot of potential, but it's very risky in the current meta. So, not really sure too much about this one. The Kofi Grigas, very strong in the current meta. Um, definitely a little bit higher up than it was before. I still don't really see it too often, but I still have to put an 8 here. I would say it's definitely somewhere up here, because, um, just look at the current meta. Very decent against Registeel, very decent, uh, like, at least neutral against the Giratina, very decent against the Cressalia, neutral against, um, the, uh, Charizard, neutral against any of the other Pokemon here, and even very decent against the, um, what's called... The Toxic Croc. So basically, against the entire top tier meta, it's fairly okay. I guess uh, Sandslash is pretty bad because of the Shadow Claw fast move, but um, very solid pick. One of the best non XL and non legendary Pokemon is still as Cavalier. I have to put A tier for sure. This Pokemon is already underrated. Kind of want to use it again, but maybe the next time where the Ultra League is around, I can try this Pokemon out because I feel like it has a lot of potential. I have to put the next one into S tier for sure. Um, Jellicent kind of. Kinda is really important in the current meta. It's just very, very solid to break. Cressalia plus um, the Charizard as well as you're going to have access to Surf for the Steelix, which is going to be nice. Very neutral, very, very bulky Pokemon. Insanely strong right now. I hate to play against it. Um, the Galarian Stunfist, actually, I would put into B tier now. Like, it, it was already not as common before and was like into A tier. And now with the Earthquake nerf, which really hurts this Pokemon, I kinda have to put a little bit lower here, so... 
not as great anymore. Mainly boss, I was surprised I don't see as many of them, but definitely an A tier Pokemon. Would not put ST yet, of course, buffed with the Aerial Ace, which is nice, but kinda. Um, while it got buffed there, the meta got a little bit more awkward because there are a little bit more Steel type Pokemon around, I feel like. So, don't know. Maybe it got kinda nerfed in terms of the meta and buffed in terms of the moves, but still, very, very solid pick. Same goes for the next two. Clear STS, Cobalion, and Virizion, I can talk a little bit about them. Those are the main fighting type Pokemon right now. Both of them very great as Hazel, -up. both of them very great as Close Up, both of them very great as Elite. They're just really, really strong right now, and like a lot of people have one on that team, so you can build around it or like you try to build against it, but they are the best answers right now for the Steelix or the Raichi Steel in the current meta, as well as you're going to beat like Pokemon like Swampert or the Virizion. It's just very, very, very solid. Like honestly, Virizion, maybe even um, higher than something like Giratina in the current meta. Very very, very solid Pokemon, definitely a must-have right now. Next one going to be the Kyurem. I played the um, basically new Kyurem, which is going to be the Paladian uh, Backscalibur on my channel already. And I can say that this Pokemon here is most likely somewhere into the CT. I would not put it higher. Also funny how like Gengar chills down there alone still. I still don't think Gengar really deserves anything other than this spot though. But there are going to be some Pokemon that's going to join this one for sure. As you're going to have the next one, which is going to be the Genesect. Has some potential. I like it a lot. I would put it into low B tier. But um, yeah, more than this, I would not really be able to give this Pokemon. Something that really got nerfed this season from kind of what it's encounters, I actually don't really know why, is going to be the um, Chestnut here. Yeah? Chestnut is going to have, of course, still access to Superpower and Frenzy Plan, very strong moveset. I would still put it higher than Superior, most likely, but I wouldn't put it that much higher, so that's kind of solid for it. Um, Greninja, I would put A tier still, very solid Pokemon, low A tier for sure, like it's not going to be insanely strong, but um, still very good against uh, the Charizard, which is nice, very good against the Steelix, very good against the um, Jailison as well, very just fast and core breaker ish Pokemon, very cool Pokemon in general, I just like it, I, I will definitely make another video for it next time Ultra League is available, not this time around most likely, but it's just a very solid pick. Something that I really would like to take a look at, and I might take a look at this one still during this period of the Ultra League, is going to be the Talent Flame, and I'm honestly thinking to put it into low S tier now again. This Pokemon really got a buff just because of Steelix and the meta that kind of built around it, because like the Charizard, you're going to be able to um, break those fighting type Pokemon as well as steel type Pokemon, which are kind of everywhere right now. But unlike the Charizard, you're going to have um, fast move damage, which is fire typing, plus you can ch uh, flame charge through things. So the matchup for this Pokemon is way better against the Steelix than, for example, the Charizard's matchup, which is kind of important, and I really like this Pokemon. So maybe that you're going to see a video about this one as well, but right now, not really there. Honestly, I think this is another Pokemon for the D tier. Yes, this Pokemon is usable. Flawgis is usable, more usable than Gengar. But um, why would you want to use Flawgis if you have something like a Clefable? Like, there's literally no reason to run this Pokemon at all. They are just Pokemon that do the exact same job, but just way better. So, I would not put it higher than this one. I, I could put, of course, C tier or whatever. But I just don't really see the point in Flawgis. Like, honestly, just don't build this. Build, like, a Clefable. XL can be yeah, fairly easy to get. Build uh, a lower nine tails, which is better. Like, there are so many more Fairy-type Pokemon that have, like, similar roles, which are just better. So, I kind of would put it there. Drapion? Not Drapion. Uh, Dragalge. Dragalge is going to be also somewhere in the B tier. Still very solid, bulky, poison, and dragon-type Pokemon. Um, very decent against something like the uh, uh, Virizion, but... Against steel type meta is kind of awkward. Cresselia is kind of awkward. Charizard is kind of ah, Charizard is kind of neutral to be fair. Um, yeah, I don't think it's really the current meta for this Pokemon. I actually would put a little bit lower. Actually, I would not even put it into B tier. It's not really the meta for it. It's still a solid Pokemon, especially for like um, limited metas for the Ultra League, which I don't think we have this season. But um, yeah, this is of course a season. 16 variant of this kind of video. We already did one for seasons 15, so we have like a little bit of changes. We're going to have here also a cool B tier Pokemon for sure, Heliolis. It is solid, it's it's not crazy strong. Like I think it's definitely usable, but I wouldn't put it higher than this. Also, you see that there's no Ampharos in here right now. Um Ampharos just didn't make it the top 100, I think, without the shadow bonus. Most of the shadow bonus would have put it there as well. So would put Ampharos a little bit higher than Heliolis, but they're kind of similar, so I would put them both into B tier. Um, I really feel like this Pokemon lost a lot of potential, sadly, this time around, and I don't see it at all. Um, the Aurora Sea was really solid the last couple of seasons, and I feel like it's so bad in the current season. So I actually would put it somewhere low B tier now. It was 
a top of A tier before, basically, being able to beat something like Trevenant, being able to beat something like Warrain, being able to beat um, a, something like a Charizard. But right now, like, the meta is kind of around, like, Steel and Fighting type Pokemon. Neither of them you want to face with this Pokemon here right now. So Aurora's really, really got weaker this season, sadly. So you don't really want to use it as often, at least, or like it's a little bit more tricky to play. Um, Trevenant, I also feel like it's a little bit awkward to play right now. I still think it has a lot of potential, and I think it's still a decent Pokemon. I would put it into higher B tier, maybe A tier as well, but I feel like Trevenant is again a little bit tricky to play. Uh, I don't know, I actually kind of have to put it into A tier, like, I cannot really argue with not putting it here, so, yeah, I, I kind of need to, like, it's going to be a very great answer against the main, um, fighting type Pokemon, as well as the Registeer, as well as the Cresselia, just for this reason, you kind of have to put it higher up there, but it's still a little bit awkward to play. Of course, the next one going to be one that we don't know yet. It's going to be most likely one of the most strongest one here, which is going to be Zygarde complete. But I think at this point of time, people are not able to get this yet. Um, I don't think even like spoofers or whatever have that stuff. Uh, you have you can only get like three salts per day, and you need like 250 total, I think, in order to get this Pokemon. So I think there's still like, I don't know, two or three weeks left until people actually have this one. I'm like at three salts, by the way. I'm not going to even get the level 50 variant. I just, I don't know, like, roots are just not from here. It takes ages for them to even go through. I don't know, not, re not really mine. Next Pokemon, definitely going to be a D-tier Pokemon. It's going to be Persimian. It's really high ranked. I think it's just a little bit bulkier than other fighting type Pokemon. And it's also, like, a sim hero with, like, brick break and close combat. But you have zero coverage with this Pokemon, which is really bad. And any other fighting type Pokemon is just better than this one, like, hands down. We're going to have here now as the next one, the Galissapod. Galissapod going to be for sure an A tier Pokemon, if not even S tier. It's like really high up there, for sure. Great um, say stop in the current meta. Has access now to both a buffed Aerial Ace as well as buffed um, Exeter. I really don't like the Exeter buff, by the way, this season, because I feel like it's more of a nerf, even though you get like plus 20 damage, I think, which is really nice. Um, and you need five more energy, but the five more energy is like really, really bad for a lot of Pokemon where you just want to spam those charge moves and now you need like a little bit longer. So I don't really like this update that much, but still good support. Very strong pick. It's definitely closer to S tier maybe even. I actually kind of have to put it S tier. Like it would be kind of cruel not to put it there. It kind of deserves a spot for sure here. As so we're going to move on to another um, Dragon type Pokemon, Como. Interesting pick right now. I feel like it's a little bit tricky to play, so I would put it into like somewhere low B tier ish. Um, was better before, but like right now, it's not really the meta for it either. A uh, Tabufini for sure is pick 100%. There's no doubt about this one here. Um, anything other than S tier is for Tabufini would be definitely a crime. We're going to have another fighter, which can just go back to the other fighting toy Pokemon here as well, which is going to be our Buzzwool. Similar to like the Heracross, I can just put them all together. They're all like kind of fighting type Pokemon that do like similar stuff, but not as cra crazy. Um, Gaslord, somewhere into B tier. Maybe. Actually, I would put it lower into C tier again. Like, actually lower C tier. The thing is, this Pokemon was amazing last season, don't get me wrong. It was, like, really, really strong. But again, we have now a meta shift towards more Fighting-type Pokemon and more Steel-type Pokemon, especially towards the Steelix, which has Dragon Tail and Breaking Swipe. This just completely destroyed the opportunity for Gaslord in the meta. And so I don't really expect to see it too often, and it's also it wasn't really seen too often recently, so... Yeah, this Pokemon definitely got a big nerf this season, sadly, even though it didn't even affect any moveset or whatever. One that got a big buff is going to be the um, Greedent, for sure, um, an A-tier Pokemon right now. Get Mud Shot, is more spammier, very, very decent in the Ultra League, very annoying to play against. Especially as they're not, I mean, there are, like, if you're running the fighting type Pokemon, of course, you have a great answer for it. But if you don't run the fighters, you kind of have only, like, neutral matchups for this Pokemon, so... Very strong pick. I would actually put it above Dubwool right now. Dubwool is very strong still, but I feel like it's not the meta for this Pokemon right now, especially not as a safe swap. So definitely still a solid pick, but not as great as it was before. We have the Obstagoon. Again, kind of also, um, it's not really having the greatest time in the current meta. A lot of fighting type Pokemon, a lot of type of Finis, a lot of flying type Pokemon. So I have to put it into somewhere low B tier in my opinion, but yeah, I would not really put it way higher. We're going to have another fighting type Pokemon, which is going to be a little bit above the other fighting type Pokemon, but they're all kind of chilling together here. As we're going to go onto another Pokemon, which I feel like has so much potential right now, but I feel like a lot of people just don't really have this one. It's going to be Runa Regis. 
just because I cannot really prove it, I'm fairly certain I would pull into the higher up B or A tier, so I'm gonna put an AG really high there, because you completely hardwall the Reggie Steel, you completely hardwall the Cobalion, you destroy usually, I think, the Cresselia, even though they have Grass Nut for you, you're going to be decent against the Charizard, you're gonna be decent against mainly the entire meta right now, I just don't have the XL Candy to build this Pokemon, so... Anything else, it would be a little bit tricky, but um, yeah. Next one going to be Sneasler. I would put into the B tier somewhere, but we are not allowed to use it right now, so we don't know really how much of an impact the recent uh, boss to this Pokemon with Exodus and Area Ace have. And now we can move on to the final one, which is the Bombardo, which we recently got released, which has X to the move Fly, which makes it really cool. And I would put into the B tier for sure. I played recently and it was really strong, so yeah, this is going to be it for today's video. And this is going to be the tier list for the Ultra League. If you agree with this, of course, let me know in comment section in general if you agree or if you don't agree, and I see you then as well. So, see you. Bye bye.